Hey guys, thanks for joining me, and if you like what you see, please subscribe. Hello friends, welcome to Sharp Ends. Today I'm going to do a review of ProTech as a whole. I have five of their knives, and I keep buying more of theirs, and I keep loving their stuff. They um, are a brand that's out of California, and they're most famously known probably for the Malibu, which is a flipper knife. I have this textured aluminum handled one and black murdered blackout but they make tons and tons of different variations of this knife and if you ever see them at a blade show they're going to have some kind of exclusive probably in this and these guys range from their like base model fairly cheap you know somewhere in the 200 hundred dollar range at, all the way up to thousands of dollars i've seen ones with uh substantial really nice work on them and the reason why this knife is so Considered so highly rated is that the the action on the flipper tab is amazing. It works really well. And then it's got this button lock. And I know there's a lot of button locks out there right now. But when ProTech made this button lock version of the Malibu, it really was the first one that was, the action was so incredibly good and complete. I mean, it just drops shuts on its bearings really nicely and flips out immediately. It's just a great knife to have. The ergos on the handle are amazing. I've got the uh, reverse Tonto version, but they've got other blade shapes as well. Um, just a really nice knife. They use a lot of aluminum in their handles, um, which is lightweight. Uh, but a lot some people don't like that. Um, that's a you know thing you have to navigate. You can find other models where they don't have aluminum, but in general they usually have aluminum scales. That's not true for the short bladed rock eye. I have the short bladed rock eye and the regular rock eye. Both of these are exclusives. I believe this is a Blade HQ excuse, exclusive. It's got the Ultim see through scale. Les George designed this. There's his symbol. And uh, it's a, a, a great little automatic. So, in general, their automatics are really good. Um, they're very strong. They kick out really well. This is S35VN in this particular case. This was 20 CV, by the way this Malibu. But, you know, really, really nice. Uh, and then the long version, this is a Way of Knife uh, EDC Gearhouse exclusive with the uh, inlay on the button here. And what I think they call this Midnight Blue. Uh, so you can see this is the, the small one. Now, this is a, a mutt, this is a big knife. I mean, this feels like a big knife, but, and it is a big knife, but it's um, surprisingly easy to carry too. Uh, it's, 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 it's just a great, it's just a great knife to have. The blade shape is really good. I like the amount of belly it has on it. And I really like the oversized chimping that it has back here. Les George again. So this is the, the regular size rock eye. And then here is the short bladed rock eye. And just to give you an idea of their lengths, I guess, of their, their blade length. Um, the blade length on this is about three and a half inches with the curve it's probably more it's more like four inches of cutting edge and then here you've got basically two and a half inches maybe three inches if you count the curve something like that and the overall length is about six and a half for the short bladed rock eye and all the way up to like eight and a half for the long guy so i really really like those two knives really cool um, and then I have, this is my, I believe the first ProTech that I got, and I got it back in the day. This is Magna Cut Blade. Uh, this is the TR3, and uh, I actually sent it to Way of Knife to get customized. This was all black, but they took the fish scales, and this was back when Magna Cut had just come out. They lasered in some fish scales here, and then they highlighted some of the fish scales on the handle. They made the, but the button white. white. And then here they also sandblasted the clip. So, you know, a cool little, a cool little uh, uh, customization from them. I like that. Uh, this is a fun little knife, and this is uh, a little bit smaller than the, than the um, Rock Eye, a little bit longer than the Malibu. Um, the action on it is great. Uh, again, this is aluminum, and this is. Um, Magna Cut, and then uh, this is the newest. It's the Strider PT Plus version, also Magna Cut. This is the smaller version of the Strider, but I really like this shape of the blade. I really like the way that it has this 
I like the way that the blade is handled. Um, uh, I just like that overall. Um, I haven't really gone into really learning more about this other than I really like the blade shape. I've been carrying it for a couple of days and I like it. Uh, Magna Cut, again, aluminum handle. So overall, what do I think about Protec? I think Protec has some really snappy action. Like if you take the um, blade and you just bring it back to about, you know, a third of the way in and let go, or it should just snap right back up. That will tell you that it's nice and strong, right? Let's see. Now, I will say this Rock Eye is a longer blade, so therefore heavier and has more momentum when you do this, right? The short bladed one won't do that anymore for the, 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 if I do it the least amount. If I go about halfway, it obviously still clicks out maybe a third of the way really nicely. Um, but I think, you know, I've been using this for a year and a half and opening it and closing it. So I think that, you know, once I change the spring, it'll, I mean, obviously still snaps out with a lot of strength. Um, but I think that in general, if you're going to be carrying one of these guys a lot, um, eventually the spring will, the springiness will start to go. It won't ever fail to open. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it used to be that I could bring this blade back in the handle to about there and then let go and it would snap open. It did just then. Huh. Maybe I just needed to uh, snap it open. Yeah, it's still good. That's great. Sometimes, see, this one right now is not doing it, right? So maybe I just need to open it. Let's test that theory. Let's open it a bunch, get it nice and greased up in there and see. Oops, hit my finger. See, see, it's not doing that right now. And I think maybe that's also because the pivot is too tight. It could be that too. Um, but yeah, overall, I love ProTech. They fit really nicely. Their standard bent clip, absolutely fine with me. I actually like this little bend clip more than I do like this gigantic one that they have here. But they always have little features like, so here's a clip. This is a textured handle, but underneath there, underneath the, the, the ramp is not textured. Same thing here. You know, you've got texturing of the fish scales, but not underneath the clip. Malibu, same thing. It looks really nice. It looks like this is totally textured all the way around. But actually, if you look closely, not textured under the clip. Their buttons are always very nice, and they're usually recessed so that there's no accidental opening of these. Now, this isn't a spring, so if you accidentally push this, it's not going to spring open, right? But even so, even in their Ultim, right? Here's the Ultim, and you can see that it's actually recessed. This TR3 actually has a lock for those who happen to be paranoid. I'm not paranoid. I think that the way that they've done the lock, the way that it's shaped and in grit and... Um, machined is actually pretty cool. Um, and I don't mind it. Um, the, um, they usually have a lanyard hole, but some of them don't like the Malibu does not have a lanyard hole, which I really appreciate. You don't know, this isn't a knife that you want a lanyard hole on, in my opinion. And the ones that are more tactical, like the larger ones do have a lanyard hole, but they're not something that's totally noticeable. This, you know, rock eye has a lanyard hole, uh, which I understand it's a really big knife, but, you know, it's not needed. Whereas the short bladed version of this does not have a lanyard hole. They also are willing to play around with materials a lot. So this is S35VN. This is CPM D2, not your regular D2. This is 20 CV. Then you've got Magna Cut and Magna Cut. So they're not afraid of playing around with new materials and seeing what looks cool. And they're not afraid of doing sprint runs for companies that, you know, want a certain configuration. So there's always, you know, for the Strider, for the Rock Eye, for, there's a bazillion different options for all of these. And I really like that too, that, you know, if you are going to get into a certain knife, like there's people out there I know that have 15 different versions of the Rock Eye. They love the Rock Eye and they love the SBR, the short bladed Rock Eye version. They love the, sh the shape and the aesthetics. And there's a hundred different versions out there. Um, and exclusives that you can get to get them in different metals, in different shapes and configurations. Just really cool. So overall, I, I love ProTech. I love that they're made in America. I love that they work with different designers. Like all of these knives are designed by specific designers. They bring in designers into their house and they work with them. Uh, usually they find a good custom maker and they say, listen, we really like your aesthetic. We want to work with you. And then they come up with something really cool. 
and that's true of all of these knives, except for this, I think, was designed in-house. But otherwise, they're finding designers out there in the community that do good work, and they're working with them and coming up with a really cool model. So that's all the good. Um, as far as the bad is concerned, I've heard people complain about the aluminum handles and scales. It doesn't bother me. It's a lightweight material, and in general, it gives it a cool aesthetic as far as it almost looks like it's an integral because they're able to make their handles go all the way around. And for a lot of their, um, you know, like this is a totally closed off in the back. So there's no gunk getting in here, right? When it's in your pocket, you just have the place for the blade. And almost all their blades are always centered. I've never gotten one that hasn't been perfectly centered. Um, so the aluminum doesn't bother me. It allows them to do some nice texturing. They have, you know, nice ramps here. They have all of their... Uh, clips are flush. The screws inside are always flush to the to the clip itself. Uh, I've never gotten one that has a raised clip except for maybe this one, but I don't, like I said, I don't really like this style clip anyway, but you can get a replacement clip for these. Uh, I haven't though. Um, um, anything else? So the, the aluminum doesn't bother me. I know it does bother some people, um, but not me especially for the price point in American made. I mean, in general, these knives are in the $200 range and for that and them being American, it's fine. I mean, if you make it out of titanium, it's going to be a lot heavier, especially for these a knife that's this big already. I mean, this is a honking knife that adding, making this in titanium with titanium scales would make this just super heavy. Um, so, uh, uh it, it doesn't bother me. Um, anything else that I think is bad about these? Um, not that I can figure out. They also are a really good job of figuring out, like, doing their heat treat. Like, they always make sure that they have really good heat treat on their stuff. Everything is within spec and is what they want. Um, the fact that they use CPMD2 on some of their knives is also a drawback to some people. I don't find it such a drawback. I think CPMD2 is absolutely fine steel. I wouldn't call it a premium steel, but I think it's a great steel. And the fact that they do call it a premium steel on their website sometimes, you know, is a little bit of a drawback. I don't think it is a, a premium steel, but it is a absolutely fine, good to go steel. The CPM version, the powder metallurgy version of D2 is definitely a step up over regular D2, and honestly, D2 is a fine steel. I, I have no problem with it. It is, it is, it is okay in every category, and okay in every category is usually better than a lot of other steels that I could name, which I won't. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on ProTech. Um, if you're interested in getting into ProTech, I definitely would. Just keep an eye out on all the different websites. If you can't find the model that you want of ProTech, go to their site, look under their, um, they have a man, uh, uh, licensed dealers page. Look at that licensed dealers page. And some of those are really small sites and really small stores that people don't frequent a lot. Go to each one of those and you will usually find the model that you want uh, just sitting there. And no one is aware that it's been sitting there for a month because they're a small little store and no one goes and checks out their stuff. You will find what you want. That's how I found the Strider is because it was on a, 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 a dealer's page that no one really goes to and it was just sitting there and magna cut and i was like all right well sign me up i'll take one of those um and then for some of the more exclusive stuff like you know way of knife edc gearhouse get on their facebook play page slash ed uh instagram and follow them and then they'll let you know when those drops happen and then hopefully you know you're not at work when that happens and you're able to snag one of the ones that they have um that's all I have for you today. If you liked what you saw, I'd really appreciate if you follow me on Instagram and if you liked and subscribed here on YouTube. And if you didn't like it, well, then don't follow or unsubscribe. That's fine, too. I'll talk to you guys next time on Sharp Ends. Bye-bye now.